Thank you for joining us this morning to view this video of our Sunday morning worship experience through God's Word, and I pray that you will be blessed for the time that you spend with us. Uh, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would keep us, lead us, and use us in your service for your glory and for the edification of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are continuing to preach from a series uh, titled, Love is More Than Just Words. Love is More Than Just Words. Uh, today's sermon, as we uh, titled it last week, is God Abides in This. And this is part two. God Abides in This, part two, which answers the question, what God is doing. And the text for today, again, is found in uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 12 through 16. And again, I'll read from the English Standard Version, and it reads, No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. And whoever uh, confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And so we have come to know and to believe that the love God has for us, because God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. Now, God abides in us by loving us and sending his son uh, to die for us on the cross. And then his son sent the spirit of God to dwell in us. And since God loves us and abides in us through his Holy Spirit, we are learning to love one another because God so loved us. God's love for us is more than just words. But in John 3, 16, God shows us his love and he puts it into action. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Now let's jump into this week's uh, sermon from last week uh, uh, with a story. There's a, a preacher named Dr. G. Gordon, uh, G. Campbell Morgan, rather, Dr. G. Campbell Morgan, who was a famous British preacher. He had uh, five sons, all of whom were ministers of the gospel. And one day a visitor in their home dared to ask a personal question. Uh, he, he's, he asked, which of the six of you is the best preacher? The father or one of the five sons? Which of you six is the best preacher? The sons and the father in unison answered mother. Of course, Mrs. Campbell Morgan had never preached a formal sermon in a church, but her life was a constant sermon on the love of God. The life of a Christian who abides in God's love is a compelling witness for God in the world. Mankind cannot see God, but we can see his love moving us to deeds of helpfulness and kindness. There are three different witnesses that suggest uh, uh, in these verses, uh, that uh, our text, uh, the witness of the believer that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, 1 John chapter 4, verse 15, and then the witness of the believer by the Spirit 1 John chapter 4, verse 13, and the third one is the witness through the believer that God is love and that he sent his son to die for the world. 
uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 14. These witnesses cannot be separated. The world will not believe that God loves sinners until they see his love at work in his children's lives. Uh, now, 1 John chapter 3, verse uh, 9 through 10, I'm reading from the English Standard Version, says, No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed a children abides in him and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. We're not sinless, but we are sinning less and less and less each day. Verse 10 says, by this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God nor is the one who does not love his brother. And then uh, we can go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 through 5, who, that talks about overcoming the world. Verse 5 says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loved the Father uh Everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. And by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. The King James Version says grievous. They're not difficult. They're not hard. They're, God has not put upon us a burden that we are unable to live up to. Verse 4 says, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who, who is it who overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe here is a good time to say that we are saved from the uh, penalty of sin. And that's justification. Jesus took care of that on the cross. But we are being saved uh, from the power of sin, and we will be saved from the presence of sin when Jesus returns. But now we are being saved from the penalty, from the uh, power of sin, and it's an ongoing process uh, brought about by the Holy Spirit moving upon us daily to reveal more and more of how God loves us, the great love that God has for us. If you ever did something and said that made you say when you realized how wrong you were, that made you admit that you don't know why God loves you the way that he does, if you haven't, keep living. Uh, the Holy Spirit is shedding abroad in our hearts daily the great love that God has for us. And the more that we learn to love God, the more we should learn to love one another. There's another story. A Salvation Army worker found a neglected woman alone on the streets and invited her to come into the chapel for help. But the woman refused to move. The Salvation Army worker assured her, we love you and want to help you. God loves you. Jesus died for you. But the woman did not budge. And as if on a divine impulse, the Salvation Army young woman leaned over and kissed the woman on the cheek, taking her in her arms. That's love in action. The woman began to cry and like a child was led into the chapel where she ultimately trusted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. The woman said uh, later on, she said, you told me that God loved me, but it wasn't until you showed me that God loves me that I wanted to be saved. Jesus did not simply preach the love of God. He proved it by giving his life on the cross. 
and he expects his followers to do likewise. If we abide in Christ, he will abide uh, in us and his love will abide in us and we in his love. If we abide in his love, we must share this love with others. Whenever we share this love, it's proof in our own hearts that we are abiding in Christ. In other words, there's no separation between the Christian's inner life and his outer life. Abiding in God's love produces two wonderful spiritual benefits in the life of a believer. Number one is he grows in knowledge and then he grows in truth. The more we love God, the more we understand the love of God. And the more we understand his love, the easier it is for us to trust him. After all, when you know someone intimately, and love that individual sincerely, you have no problem putting your confidence in them. There was a man uh, standing in a greeting card section in a store, and he was having a hard time picking out a card. So the clerk came up to him and asked, uh, may I help you, sir? And he said, well, it's our 40th wedding anniversary. But I can't find a card that says what I want to say. You, you know, 40 years ago, I wouldn't have had a hard time or any problems at all picking out a card. Because back then, I thought I knew what love was. But we love each other so much more today that I just can't find a card that says it. This is growing, this is a growing Christian's experience with God. As he abides in Christ and spends time in fellowship with him, we come to love God more and more. And our love also grows in his love for others. Our love must grow in our love for other Christians, for the lost even, and even for our enemies. As we share the Father's love with others, our experience uh, is more, we will experience more of the Father's love. We understand the Father's love better and better because God is love. Then it's not simply a profound biblical state statement when we say to someone we love them. It's the basis for our relationship with God and with his children. Because God is love, we can love. God is not past history, it's present reality. Love one another begins as a commandment in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Then it becomes a privilege in 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. But it's more than a commandment or a privilege as we grow. It also becomes a thrilling consequence and evidence of our abiding in Christ according to verse 12. Loving one another is not something we simply ought to do. It's something we want to do. Because he first loved us. I want to love him and I want to love others. Now there are some practical application that grows out of this basic truth. First, the better we know God's love, the easier it will be to live as a Christian. Bible knowledge alone does not take the place of personal experience of God's love. In fact, it can be a dangerous substitute if we are not careful. There, there was a young lady named Helen came home from a youth retreat 
greatly enthused over what she had learned. She told her sister, Joyce, we had some terrific sessions on how to have personal devotion. And she says, I plan to have my devotion every single day. And as some days went by and grew into weeks, matter of fact, a week later after the retreat, while Joyce was running the vacuum cleaner, she heard Helen screaming, do you have to make all of that noise? Don't you know I'm trying to have my devotion? And the verbal explosion was followed by the slamming of doors. Helen still had to learn that personal devotion are not an end in themselves. You must put them into action. If they don't help us to love God and love one another, they are accomplishing little or nothing in our lives. The Bible is a revelation of God's love and the better we understand his love, the easier it should be for us to obey him and to love others. The second consideration is that unless we love the lost, our verbal witness to them will be useless. The gospel message is a message of love and the love was both declared and demonstrated by Jesus Christ. The only way we, we, we can effectively win others to, to, uh, de is to declare the gospel and demonstrate it in how we live. Too much witnessing today is just the speaking of words. People need an expression of love. One reason why God permits the world to hate Christians is so that Christians may return may return to return love to the world's hatred. I'll say that again. One reason why God permits the world to hate Christians, and Jesus says, if they hate me, they're gonna hate you. One of the reasons he allows the word to hate us is so that we may return love to the world to replace hatred. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. But I say, Jesus says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And in this paragraph of his letter, John has taken us to the very foundation of Christian love. But he still has more to teach us. He deals later on with our own personal love for God and how God perfect or perfects that love in us. These two aspects of a Christian love cannot be separated either from one another. If we love God, we will love one another. If we love one another, we will grow in our love for God. Both statements are true because God is love. And we are to express our love for God and others. Even if our enemies, be, because, even our enemies because of God showed us how by giving his son who gave his life on the cross. So we've been shown how to love even our enemies by self-sacrifice, by giving what could save our lives, could keep us alive. We give it, we're willing to give it so that somebody else can live. You, you might have a, 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 a one piece of bread that will keep your, you alive, but you decide to give it to somebody else that needs it. And that's demonstrating God's love. God demonstrated his love in John 3, 16. He gave his only begotten son who gave his life for us on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. He hung, bled, and died so that we can live. He died 
so that we not only could live but have and not only have a right to the tree of life but that we might have it more abundantly he sacrificed his life and you can't beat god giving whatever you give to others god will beat you giving by giving more to you the more you love others god will love you more or not so much god will love us more but we will understand his love for us more or better. So work at doing more than just saying you love someone, but demonstrating that love, putting it into action, because that's the way God loves us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for... Uh, keeping us and guiding us and using us. And we pray that you would help us to always be willing to demonstrate your love for others uh, as you work through us. Help us to realize that it's not when people are loving us, it's when people are hating us that re they really need to see your love for us in action. So help us during the hard times to show your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, until next week, love on somebody. And no matter how much they hate you, learn to love on them. And mask up, practice social distancing, wash your hands often, and show God's love for you by showing your love for others. And with that, I'm out of here. Take care. Bye-bye.